accommodated myself. Oh, are you, Sister Mary Thomas? I marinated myself in that 15th chapter before I concluded that I would stop with verse 58. And I found out that the Apostle Paul, who is attributed to having written at least two thirds of the of the uh, New Testament. The Apostle Paul, of course, he was first called Saul, and he did go around Saul and the people. He did do that. He did like some people do today. They go around Saul and people. Yeah, I know it's S-A-U-L, but I'm talking about S-O-I-L. Doing more harm than good, hating. Malice, strife, hatred. Envy, covetousness, don't want anything anybody else got if you already have Jesus. Glory to God. The Apostle Paul, in this particular time, his name had been changed. He had seen the light. He had seen the light on the Damascus Road, of course. You can read this, of course, in the book of Acts, Acts of the Apostles, Acts of the Holy Spirit, Acts of the Women. You can read this in there. In the 16th chapter, the 26th chapter, read about the uh, Saul first and then the Apostle. Acts chapter 9, I think you will find there about the conversion. Most of us know these truths, but it's good to review them. It's good to review them. And when we review them, we find out that his name was changed. And when our name is changed, our attitude ought to change. Yeah. Our disposition ought to change. Yeah. Our demeanor ought to change. Yeah. He was trying to convince the people in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and get them to know that this life is not all that is for us. That's what it's there for. We shall not all go to sleep. Uh, we're going to be changed. I'll show you a mystery. And of course, Jesus Christ was raised from the dead, so you don't have to worry uh, because your spirit is going to live. Your soul is going to, this body is going to deteriorate. We know that because of what Adam did in the Garden of Eden. And Eve was a part of it. I'm not going to be a part of evil. Oh, I'm not going to be a part of it. I'm not going to be a part of it. No. But he was trying to convince, and I think he did a very good job. He's, if you read these passages, and I will not read them tonight, but the last verse I think we should read. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58. Verse 58. Verse 58. Therefore, my dearly brothers, and I say that's generic. When I say that is because the Lord deemed it necessary, it was not Adam's idea that the woman was taken out of the man. First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58. I see some people standing. Isn't it wonderful we have legs and feet? They're standing for the gospel of Jesus Christ. They're standing for the Holy Scriptures. Therefore, my dear brothers, stand firm. Stand steady. Oh, be no. sober. Yes. Be agile. Amen. Be alert. Amen. Be focused. Amen. Keep your mind fixed on Jesus and the pride that he has in store for us. Let nothing move you. And someone said something about the tree that's planted by the rivers of water. And it is believed that there is more of the palm tree in the ground than there is above the ground. Like a tree planted by the rivers of water. That's the posture that we should have once we are born of the Spirit of God. And know that there is a resurrection. Let nothing move you. Always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord. Because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. You may be seated. The work of the Lord. The work of the Lord. God has given us abilities. He has given us gifts. I want to 
Romans chapter 12 tells us there are gifts that have been given to the body of Christ. And then they're repeated in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, the gifts that have been given to us, those of us who are in the body of Christ. Then you will find more of those gifts. In Ephesians chapter 4, you will find more of those gifts and abilities given to us. Of course, we want to know that when God gives you something, he wants you to use it for his glory. Two things that we should keep in our minds, and I've asked the Lord to help me, and all of the things that's going on around me, and all of the things that's happening to us, I asked him to help me to keep this in mind, that it is his perfect will for my life that I would edify my brothers and sisters. In 1 Corinthians 14, it is repeatedly stated, edify, 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 edify. Comfort, console, encourage the people of God, those who are in the body of Christ. And the second thing he asked me to do and commands me to do, and I'm doing it, and that is those ministries that we do to one another will cause our lives to glorify the Lord. Edify the body, encourage one another, and when we do that, God is glorified. Edify one another and glorify the Lord. Simple but profound. Simple but profound. Simple but profound. Those are the things that he has asked us to do. In that last verse that we read, 1 Corinthians 15, 58, uh, those verses say to us, be steadfast, unmovable. And I said, uh, when I was looking at it, I said, I shall not, I shall not be moved. I shall not, I shall not be moved like a tree that's planted by the water. And I shall not be moved. I know the devil doesn't like it, but I shall not be moved. I know the devil doesn't like it, but. Sit down. And so I said, What does that mean? 